Hi, everybody. So excited to be live with you. I have such a surprise. So I hope you join us because you are gonna benefit from this live more than any other live before. Because I have a guest, a guest that is one of my best friends ever, Dr. Daniela Farkash, I introduced her to you. And uh, we're gonna talk about her book, a book that is such an um, extraordinary achievement. But let me introduce Dr. Daniela and she can introduce herself if she wants, because she is a, a, an amazing doctor and an amazing friend, an amazing human being. And the book she wrote, guys, I highly recommend. I want you to go and run and get this book as soon as possible. If you want to live a happy and healthy and, and a, a, a life full of, uh, of uh, completion and, and uh, satisfaction, because it's all about health. And we don't want to age. We don't want to, who wants to age? We want to be happy and healthy and young forever. And uh, we want to reap the benefits of, of, of beauty for the rest of our life. And uh, Dr. Daniela came up with this book. This book is called The End of Aging. Let, let's show the book to everybody if you have it. I want people to see it. The End of Aging by Dr. Daniela Farkas. This, why this book is so important? Because it teaches you amazing things. And I'm going to go and put a lot of questions with Dr. Daniela. But if you guys are watching us, uh, feel free to ask questions. Questions about um, uh, your um, health problems, questions about this book. And uh, uh, we will be able to, you can, you can ask Dr. Farkash, whatever you want to ask. Um, this um, book explained the seven pillars of age and, and uh, 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 health and how to prevent uh, aging, actually. Uh, and we'll let Dr. Daniela explain much more about the book and tell you how the book has been structured because uh, she has um, extraordinary discoveries in this book. Now, I want to tell you, Dr. Farkash, uh, was born in Romania, by the way. So for all the Romanian people who are watching, I want you guys to know that Dr. Farkash comes from Romania. She actually came here when she was 19, no? Yes. Am I right? 19. And then she graduated uh, the college here and then she opened her practice. She is she earned a, a, a degree in uh, biometrics, then a doctorate, but she was first graduating as a biologist, magna cum laude. So you can imagine uh, oh how amazing she is. And she uh, became a homeopathic practitioner also on top of all of this achievement. And she created a device for that. I really applaud you, an invention uh, that was, I think, patented in 2017 that you can correct without surgery the, the club foot uh, and pigeon toe uh, uh, in the, the young children. So that's pretty remarkable. Uh, also, she works uh, with the water. That's another aspect of her personality and her achievements in which she developed creams uh, with the use of the structured water uh, in introducing nutrients and stem cell into skin to regenerate skin. And that, I think, is also the future of medicine. Everything that Dr. Farkas talks in this book is actually the future of medicine. Now, uh, the end of aging was recently released, and she uses a quote by Aristotle at the very beginning of her book. And it, the quote is probably heard this amazing quote: is, "Excellence is now an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution." And that's what Dr. Farkas did. All her work is the result of intelligent execution. A lot of hard work. I know Dr. Car Farkas for a very, very long time. And she's one of my best friends ever. Now, I'm going to start putting questions. So I, I wrote them down because I want to make sure I follow the, the book uh, and also your career. So I want to ask you first, why did you decide to write this book, Dr. Farka? Well, I am getting close to retirement and I do not <laughs> want to age. Yes. Exactly. I want to age. To many of my patients, they mm -hmm. can retired and it's all downhill from there and for me i want to be a period of uh, growth yes. of excitement and of uh, experiencing new stuff every single day so exactly yes 
So um, tell us a little bit um, what kind of research you did in this book. What's the, the, the meat of this book? What's the essence of it? What's the message of the book? It all started from uh, a visit in Cuba. I did see a lot of cars in Cuba that were made in the United States in 1930, 35, 38, 40. Interesting. Okay. Castro regime. Mm -hmm. and cars that are supposed to last like 10 years, 15 years, are 90 years later absolutely perfect. They run like Swiss watches and no problems. And I was thinking, where are the same cohort of cars that were made in United States in the same year and did not end up in Cuba? And wow. there are absolutely nothing left from the cars that ended up in United States, not abroad. So I said, so what would be the difference between the cars that were made in America and ended in Cuba and the cars right. ended here. And the only difference is maintenance. People in Cuba took care of their cars. And right. that's why the cars responded by staying uh, uh, functioning well 90 years later. So if Incredible. maintenance is so good for a car, I am way more important than a car. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve way more maintenance in order to stay, not 15 years like a car is supposed to last, but 150 or 250 years without exactly. issues associated with old. Exactly. So that's- now, So that. I find this analogy absolutely incredible. The fact that you came to the realization that, hey, so if a car can, with maintenance, uh, you know, be uh, very good for so many years, why this body that is actually like a machine, it's the most perfect, the most intelligent machine, sometimes it's falling apart. And, and why is it falling apart? What kind of a fuel are we using that is not the right fuel? Why are we missing the maintenance? You're right. We're not doing maintenance on our bodies. We're not taking care of our body. Uh, so you look at look at the society we are living in. And we see all these people who are uh, mentally troubled, who are obese, who have all kinds of diseases at a very early age. The question is why. And then I want to ask you: um, Are uh, um, you know what I mean? Uh, diet, exercise, all of these things important for uh, longevity, or what's actually important for longevity? What is your take on it? Well. Diet is very important, exercise is important, sleep is important, uh, mm -hmm. attitude is very important, but right. not those reverse aging. Mm -hmm. They do uh, help in a person obtaining a healthy and long life, but right. reverse aging. There yeah. are uh, the, the, all those steps that you mentioned, diet, exercise, sleep, uh, mental attitude, people not taking stupid, stupid uh, uh, risks. Like, for example, uh, driving on a motorcycle on high express without a helmet. Right. You know, those are stupid choices that people play with their own health. But suppose that everybody doesn't do stupid mistakes. Uh, those, those, the of being healthy are important uh, uh, parameters of like trying not to not to consume uh, uh, genetically modified food, not to consume uh, uh, pesticide sprayed uh, foods. Those are important, but those do not reverse aging. Uh, aging is reverse. Aging is a disease. And it was classified as a disease in uh, 2018 by the World Health Organization. And because it was classified as a disease, it compared with any diseases. Uh, now, let me, let me ask you. So, so, okay, so age is a, a disease. That why do we age? 
We age because of those seven pillars that you mentioned before. We mm -hmm. age because we accumulate uh, toxins mm -hmm. in the cell. We age because of mitochondria. Mitochondria is damaged and that is pretty much at the core of any disease. The membrane of the cell, yeah. Yes, we also age because we um, uh, uh, the cells start to divide uncontrolled. Mm. That is cancer. We age mm. because uh, cells uh, cells do get old and get what it's called senescent, and they do not recycle as they should. We age because in the body there is an internal clock that prevents people from having damage at the DNA level and it pretty much tell a cell when to die. And yes, those are pillars that need to be discussed. Do you also think that we are programmed to die in a certain way? We are no, we in a real sense, we are. And uh, the way this happens is that a cell is not supposed to live hundreds of years uh, is not supposed time, to live hundreds of oh, years every time a cell divides with very few exceptions uh there are little little telomere we call it like the um, yeah. mm. at the end of the dna that every time a cell reproduces itself those markers get shorter and shorter so after right. it times there are no more telomeres, and this is the signal that the cell should commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes this works, most of the time it works excellent, right. but sometimes the cell, being a living organism, right. wants to live, and it becomes immortal, and in this case, cancer results. And how much is um, cell supposed to live? Depends. How long is the? Uh, long? Depends of where the cell is. For example, in our stomach, a cell lives only a couple of hours, and it uh, once it dies, the body takes the components of the cell and make new ones. Okay. Uh, on the skin, on average, is about a month. Okay. Uh, are cells like bone cells that live a lot longer, but uh, and nerve cells, but most of the cells have a pretty set time when it's time to say goodbye, let's regenerate and let's recycle my components and make a brand new cell out of me. Okay, so if, if we think this way, you know, uh, do you believe? From that perspective, do you believe that immortality is actually possible? Yes, it is. And the reason I believe this, actually, actually, the research that we have now in the United States mm -hmm. proves that immortality is achievable. Uh, what we have to do is to regenerate the cell, like, for example, a skin cell that is supposed to live one month, we could take this somatic cell, this skin cell, and expose it to some chemicals. It's called, uh, uh, it's a group of four chemicals that takes this cell and reprogram it exactly like a computer to start like brand new. So uh -huh. you could take, for example, an eye cell and reprogram it to see how it was when you are five. If we could do that with a group of cells, we could do it with an organism. And actually, uh, those, uh, those experiments are already, uh, are already in uh, progress with mice, where they take all mice, they expose it to, uh, to those factors, and it's like a virus that it's introducing the body. It's not a virus, it's like a virus. And it is activated with a short course of antibiotics for let's say uh, uh, doxycycline for five days. And what happens in those five days, 
the mice turns backward the equivalent of five years. Yes, mm. so they do this already in, in mice. Uh, <coughs> course, it's not done, to my knowledge, in humans yet, but it's a matter of time until this is going to be done in humans. Actually, very recent. How long do you anticipate this to take? Within five years. So within five years, we'll be able to achieve this. This is so, phenomenal. Yes, we really will be able to turn the clock backwards. And if you turn the clock backwards, do you think um, an older person can be helped? It is uh, exactly like a computer. Generate? You would reboot it and you turn the clock backwards. Yes. Yes. So an older person can actually turn, turn the clock backwards. I already see... Uh, people aging, a lot of people aging um, uh, more slow, like uh, like uh, in an incredible way. I just saw a woman today, um, 92 years old, that she looked absolutely uh, uh, incredible. And she was dancing and I look at her and said, 92 years old, incredible. So it is possible. It is possible. It's possible. Yes, it and is. We, and the medical field is going that way right now, no? Yes. Uh, you probably heard of artificial intelligence, like uh, yes. GPS. Yes. Uh, artificial intelligence is now used in medicine also. So okay. what they are doing, they are using quantum computers to find out for each each individual Mm -hmm. Which way and which which uh, chemicals and what programs a person should be in, in such a way that they optimize the they optimize the aging, turning back the aging. And those programs already exist. Uh, they are employed. One of the uh, uh, program that uses this technology is uh, uh, with a group of scientists in um, in Massachusetts in, from uh, uh, mm -hmm. Perth. And it's a group of seven scientists that started a company. It's called Ginkgo Bilboa. And uh, it's actually on the stock, uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange under the, um, under the symbol of DNA. Yes, those are already in practice as we speak. Wow. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super excited. I think that this is just uh, a, such a such a revolutionary uh, concept and idea. I hope that people will be able to grasp it, to understand the meaning of it, you know, and go for it. It is very new. And yeah. I, oh, I have patients, for example, that damage the kidney, for example, or, mm -hmm. the, right. or they damage an organ. Yes. Um, in my practice, I do medicine, and uh, sometimes we have burn victims. And uh, what I do, I we used to have artificial skin, and we used to put a artificial skin or a graft on the skin to cover the right. to heal the person. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do, I take tiny, tiny bi biopsies from the patient intact skin from anywhere on the body, like inner thigh, belly, wh wherever he has intact skin or she. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I take some blood from the patient and I send it to the lab. What the lab right. does, it takes the skin, the tiny biopsies of like two millimeters each, and uh, with their, the patient's own blood grows new skin. And it grows a piece as big as I ask. For example, the patient has a burn defect of, let's say, 10 centimeters. I tell them, I need a 10 centimeter piece of skin. Right. And seven days later, 10 days later, uh, from the lab, it comes overnight on ice, the patient's own skin, and I put it on so there is no rejection or no nothing. So, of course, because it's their own skin doing now we growing already an organ the skin which is one of the most sophisticated organ yes the, 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 the bigger the biggest organ is the skin yeah yes but uh just think about if we could grow the skin 
there is a matter of time until we would be able to grow a kidney or a heart. Yes. Or replace parts of the brain that are affected by, like Alzheimer's and the brain shrink. Right. Uh, yes, those are possibilities and the technology is already here. So this is not science fiction. This is happening now. I use this uh, company. It's called My Own Skin. I use it in my practice. That's so fascinating. That's so incredible. It is. Now, but it's even what? more is mm -hmm. the fact that there is zero rejection. So of course. there's no need for all those anti-rejection medication that no right. Like, yes. That's exactly it, yeah. Now, I want to ask you another question. What role do genetics play in longevity? Um, genetics plays about 1.5% a role. Mm -hmm. Right. Most of the uh, markers are done by the environment or epigenetics, which is called above the gene. And... Uh, Above, uh, we are not victims of what we are born with our genetics. Yes, there is a predisposition. Exactly like an electric car has a predisposition to get empty if you don't charge it. Right. But, uh, but uh, the fact that we can influence the genes by the choices we do and by the way we eat and by the way you think up to 98.5% is really amazing. That to me is so incredible. It I is. Want to let everybody listening, you're listening to Dr. Farkash and her amazing uh, uh, book, uh, The End of Aging. Um, we are talking about some extraordinary discoveries in the medical field. Uh, feel free to ask questions. If you want to ask Dr. Farkash something, just write it down. I will see those questions, address them to Dr. Farkash. So, if you have questions about uh, your own health or something about this topic, because this is such an extraordinary topic, we all want to live forever. We want to live uh, healthy, long lives and look fabulous and, uh, and, and reverse aging. And this is what Dr. Farkash is teaching us today. Now, Dr. Farkash, there's a lot of autoimmune disorder. I'm going to ask you about, uh, 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 is there a way, you know, to to prevent this autoimmune because some some of them, they do have a, a, the root of a psychological uh, 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 problem, like like an autoimmune that is uh, uh, that, that all of a sudden happens as a result of a trauma, for instance. And as you know very well, you know, um, what happens is with, um, um, you know, uh, the, the, this autoimmune, they very, med the medical field has no idea how to, how to manage them and how to cure them. Most of the autoimmune disease originates in the gut. And mm -hmm. actually, uh, actually, in my opinion, all of them, but I do not want to commit to all. Right. Mm -hmm. But all that I know <laughs> are originating in the gut. And uh, uh, the gut has something called uh, a barrier where whatever we ingest, it needs to be converted into a molecule or form that could be absorbed by the body. Right. In the process of converting from one to the other, many times the junction in between the cells get a little bit uh, damaged and a little wider, so some of the molecules could penetrate from the inside of the gut straight into the bloodstream and that from there they go straight to the liver. That would be the first step. Um, if somebody has a leaky gut, whatever was absorbed from the intestine that was not supposed to be absorbed right. is going to be recognized by the body as being something that it shouldn't be there. Right. So, not self. So if it's recognized as not self, the body in its infinite intelligence will try to attack the intruder and uh, destroy the intruder. So for example, when we eat, let's say gluten, uh, which is found in uh, grains, we eat right. the 
grains, it has some gluten. Some gluten has very, very small molecules that penetrate through the junction. And they are only little parts, like portions of bacteria. It's not a whole bacteria. But they are going to go and like lace a joint. Let's say the knee joint. Uh, the body will look at these particles, which mm -hmm. is called uh, agglutinin, and uh, it's going to try to destroy the invader. In doing so, since those are only laces or only like a thin coat mm. of lectins over the joint, in this process, the joint will be destroyed. The patient or the, uh, the uh, owner of something like this would come out with some immune disorder like rheumatoid arthritis. Of course, yeah. Yes, but yeah. it's not only for the knee. This happens with the thyroid, with the heart, with the Alzheimer's. Uh, in Alzheimer's, it's really horrible because the body is trying so hard to protect the brain and it's going to trim little neurons in order to protect dendrites from being attacked. And it trims so much until the nerve dies because there is no support around the nerve. And, and what, what can be done for that? Uh, a person, I think the very first step in preventing those autoimmune diseases is to a person to be educated, to know where this comes from. Because if we compare them, uh, uh, if we do this on little compartments, like for example, I am a doctor for the knee, he's a doctor for the skin, this is a doctor, whatever, and somebody comes with a problem on the skin, for example, and he has a little bit of psoriasis. That's an autoimmune disease. Instead of looking why this happens, we say it's autoimmune. Yes, it's autoimmune, but where did it come from? Because nobody in my family had, I never saw it before and it's autoimmune. It's autoimmune because the body will try to prevent attacks from whatever you eat. So the first step is to know what causes autoimmune and to eliminate the foods that causes leaky gut. Okay, now I have some questions here. Um, Dan Ariel says that if the intruder is friction, pressure, uh, any suggestion in approach, and he said that he knows uh, this is not a well-known uh, thing, but this has been recognized by Dr. Afrin. Have you heard of Dr. Afrin? And more so, uh, I don't know what he tries to say, uh, it has been diagnosed in all people. So in other words, the question is, any, any suggestion in this approach of the intruder? And, it, and also he's asking me if you're familiar with MSAS, mast cell activation syndrome. Uh, I am. Uh, yes. Uh, if the intruder, it's a pressure. That was the first point. Right. Uh, you have to eliminate the pressure. Uh, I work in limb salvage and we have a lot of pressure points and okay. the body will respond to pressure by trying to cushioning the organ from the uh, pressure that is constantly put in and the body is going to build scar tissue and right. is going to build uh, uh, steps into preventing damage to itself. Many times it builds so much scar tissue that it cuts the circulation or the function of the organ it tries to protect, just like in the case of Alzheimer's. But uh, uh, the first step, again, it's education. Whatever causes pressure, whatever causes the insult, first you have to know what caused the insult right. and then to eliminate. Yes. Yeah. Now, Christina asked us uh, if we, uh, what is your opinion about uh, carbon-60 in reversing aging? Carbon-60, I use carbon-60. 
for the last five years or four years, before even people knew that it exists. Uh, it was discovered uh, in 78 and the people that did discover it, or 88, the people that did discover it, it received the Nobel Prize for it. Mm -hmm. It is excellent. It is excellent. The problem with the carbon 60, it needs to be, uh, it needs to be uh, pure. And uh, uh, the, um, the purity has to be checked with the lab because a lot of people dissolve carbon-16 like olive oil and instead of putting a little bit of uh, carbon-60, they kind of put nothing and then you have too much results. Right. Yes, yeah. carbon-60, it's an excellent, excellent uh, detoxifier. Uh, it's shaped like a soccer ball and right. It has many points where it could accept electrons, therefore acting as an antioxidant. But uh, when we ingest it, it's an empty sucker. And three, four hours later, it's completely eliminated through the kidney, full of toxins. So it's an unbelievable way of detoxifying. Yeah. It, it, I, what I've heard oral researchers saying that um, a carbon-60 is actually 300 times more powerful than vitamin C as an antioxidant. Now, another question is about biotics. If probiotics are good for the, for the gut. I believe in probiotics, mm -hmm. prebiotics. Both are good and very important. Um, think about when we are born, if we are born via C-section, or somebody's born via C-section, that baby, it's 100% sterile. If right. it's born vaginally, the only bacteria and contamination it has, it's the vaginal contamination. Right. That baby comes into a world where there are so many viruses and so many bacteria. Right. Exactly. Deadly. So right. how, the body, how does mother nature prevent infection on that child right. via something called colostrum. The mother, instead of producing milk, it's producing something whitish, it's called colostrum, and that is like a vaccine. Whatever the mother developed in her life, all the uh, sicknesses that she developed antibody, she's going to pass that milk to the baby. Mm -hmm. It's a passive vaccine. It also provides prebiotics, probiotics for the gut because that baby's GI never function. Mm -hmm. The mother nature wants to prevent leaky gut. So it contamin contains good bacteria that will populate the gut right. and prebiotics to feed those bacteria until the right. baby Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, you're suggesting that colostrum is actually very good for the gut. So, yeah. Excellent. 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 Yeah. Uh, uh, I use colostrum from a company here in the United States. And the uh, colostrum that we have, it uh, has a lot of growth factor, growth hormones. I do not know how many, how many people know about growth right. hormones. In my opinion, it is the fountain of youth. Uh, yeah. It also has uh, a probiotics, prebiotics, peptides. It's excellent. Colostrum Ex has probiotics uh, 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 and, and has, it, has it all, no? Yes. Okay, yeah. fabulous. So um, any questions you guys have, feel free, because I'm glad that you finally, I know you're listening, but... I'm glad that you asked Dr. Farkash question. Now, Dr. Farkash, our vitamin is good. So uh, people don't like sometimes to take vitamins. They said, okay, if my food is okay, it has all the vitamins. Do you suggest that people should take vitamins? I believe in eating healthy. And mm -hmm. I try my best to eat very healthy for myself. Right, I right, yeah. Food. I buy very, very good food. And I'm eating very right. healthy. However, I take vitamins. I am extremely selective 
with the vitamins I take. Uh, right. uh, I take, for example, vitamin D3. And the reason I take D3, D3 is because uh, I, uh, although it's a fat soluble vitamin and it, you can produce it if you stay in the sun, I don't stay that much in the sun because I do not want the damages that the ultraviolet produces on the skin. And I still want to have a beautiful skin. So I'm not going to damage it by staying right. in the sun. A right. little bit in the morning, but that's about it. And uh, I take the vitamin D3 with it. With the D3, I also take another vitamin also fat soluble it's for k2 uh, the vitamin k2 what it does it helps a lot with the metabolism of calcium so mm -hmm. people that have for example calcium in the carotid artery or around the heart mm -hmm. why you have to have a heart attack <laughs> uh, right. or have osteoporosis or right. wants to prevent osteoporosis I always recommend them to take a little bit higher doses of vitamin D3 with K2. Personally, I take 180 micrograms of K2 daily and 10,000 milligrams or units of vitamin D3. Uh, you take 10,000 units uh, daily? Daily, yes. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good. Now the... Uh, medical floor also recommends 50,000 once a week, which will pretty much equal what you said, but those D3 comes with a prescription, the 50,000 once a week, 50,000 yeah. units. Uh, before you start that, I think it's much wiser to check the blood to see exactly where you are. The level, yeah. Because if you do not check, you do not know. And it's much wiser to education, to have a line, to know where you start. Yeah. Is there a company, somebody's asking us if you share a company that get, that uh, manufacture colostrum, where to get colostrum? Is there a specific company that you recommend? Uh, Sovereign Labs. I buy from Sovereign Labs. Uh, I buy the uh, lipophilized colostrum. Is there a, is there a, 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 a dosage of colostrum? How many milligrams? So people should know. Uh, it comes with a measurement. Mm -hmm. Usually, I have a yogurt in the morning, and I put a. And you put colostrum in uh, the yogurt, yeah. Every. Uh, but the colostrum comes in pills too, so for everybody. Uh, yes. Who don't want to put it, yeah, in in the in but, yogurt. Can take yeah, a pill. Would probably have their own uh, uh, concentration, and it's better to ask the company of how much you should do it because if they package the pills like six pills or five mm -hmm. pills, for me this is not doable i don't like to take pills so i buy the powder and mix it it's it's good it doesn't any antioxidants uh, other than carbon 60 which is antioxidant any other oxidants that antioxidants that you recommend yes uh, a lot of them are antioxidants Antioxidants, the best way to get it is from food. It really is. Yeah, uh, I agree. But I also take vitamin C. Uh, and the reason I take vitamin C is because it is so important for so many reactions. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very good antioxidant, probably the best, much more powerful than uh, carbon-60 is melat melatonin. And melatonin, the best source of melatonin is the plant melatonin. The plant right. melatonin, it's about 600 times more powerful than the animal melatonin. And you do not need a lot. You need about three milligrams. So you actually buy the plant melatonin? Yes. Yeah. It's phytomelatonin. And you take it at night? Does it make you sleepy? It does. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So for everybody who have sleeping problem, you got your answers. Not only you get an extraordinary antioxidant, but you have a, a pill that can help you sleep and is a natural way to get asleep because melatonin is something that is naturally produced in the brain. So it's something that uh, you guys yes. should consider if you have a sleeping problem. 
by every single cell in the body. They are two right. types of melatonin. One that is in the nighttime that is produced by the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. respond to darkness. That's why it's called right. the but uh, about uh, half a year ago, they found out, or a year ago, they found out that melatonin, about 95% is produced in every single cell, and 5% is produced in the brain. And the reason is that it's such a strong antioxidant that the body needs it around the clock. So in right. the time when there is sun, the skin does it in response to uh, ultra uh, infrared uh, right. wave. But in the nighttime, when it's no sun, the pineal gland is doing in response to darkness. So both are important. The more important one is the daytime. That's why, for example, when we stay at a campfire, we feel so good. It's because of the infrared rays that that uh, gives us the melatonin. Some people are making a joke and they say uh, that it's good to live in the dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about glutathione? What about um, glutathione? Is it is, glutathione? Uh, yes, uh, glutathione, it was considered the best antioxidant, the yeah. mud until they discovered the daytime melatonin. <laughs> It's so. a molecule that fits straight into the Krebs cycle, and it is extremely, extremely important. It uh, could donate and could accept electrons, so it, it's, it's excellent. It is a very, very powerful antioxidant. Some people that are from the older school would tell you that this is the most important antioxidant in the body because they didn't read the <laughs> latest. The latest discoveries, yeah. Um, Marta tells us that this is great information and that she loves us. And there's oh. a lot of love messages coming from people. But you guys, Dr. Farka, show them the book. You guys, you want to learn extraordinary things about your health. So, Do you really want to understand what aging is all about? I want to tell you, this book, The End of Aging by Dr. Farka, is really a manual to help you live a healthy and long long life this is the key to longevity and everything when it comes to to uh, uh, longevity is about knowledge so what dr farkas did so many years of studying medicine so many years of putting knowledge together she came with an extraordinary book the results of many years of research many years of understanding in a very profound way uh, uh, what uh, you know aging is all about and how can we prevent it and uh, Dr. Farkas, things are, are changing all the time. You know, the world is changing. The medical field is evolving from a day into the next. If you think the way we, we used to practice uh, uh, surgeries 50, 70 years ago, the way we do it nowadays, you know, where people can find a book. People ask about where can they find a book. Tell us where can we buy your book, Dr. Farkas. The book, uh, the easiest way, it's online. Mm -hmm. on but uh, uh, anybody could order it on Amazon and uh, also on, uh, I think they have it in Barnes & Noble. They have it all over. But Amazon would be the easiest choice. Please, and also Earth Farkas, on your site, if people go to Dr. Farkas, do they find a book they can buy it from your, your site? Uh, I didn't link it yet. You didn't? <laughs> <laughs> it is actually happened. But you guys go can put Dr. Farkas and put the title of the book. Go to Amazon, you know, and put The End of Aging. Or go online and just put the title of the book, The End of Aging with Dr. Daniela Farkas, uh, who is actually Romanian. And, uh, and, and she is like one of the most, uh, um, you know, uh, educated women in the field I've ever met. It's like I'm, I'm serious when I say this because I have so much love and respect for Dr. Farkas. For oh. all the knowledge, for everything she does for all of us in helping us to stay happy and healthy and 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 work towards longevity. Uh, and uh, uh, there's there are so many things in this book. Doc. You explain so many extraordinary things that happen within our body. You need our body. Uh, now somebody's helping us. Uh, what is your site? Because it's important for people to know. Do you 
do we have a, a, a specific site how is it called uh, the the uh, publisher did open a site for this book it's called the end of aging <laughs> that oh, so this is fabulous so for you guys if you want to go to dr farkas you actually go to the title of the book which is brilliant to have a, a, a site with the title of a book the end of aging dot com no yes the but end of aging if you can show the book one more time because people if they, they visual people want to see so the end of it coming even closer to the screen oh this is fabulous the end of aging by dr daniela farkas and the the website where you can go is the end of uh, and this is the way you can actually read everything about this book find out where the book is click on link buy the book but get this book because you you is this book in an audio format or no it's only um uh it's audio and is uh, it is audio that's yeah. genius that's yeah. brilliant because i try to do my books audio because people don't have time to read and if it's audio you know people listen to a recording and they 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 sometimes integrate the information much easier than sitting and reading with we, we live in such a fast forward world and uh, uh listening is is in a way easier for people so the audio format is it in kindle also kindle format i really do not know the book really came out recently so I <laughs> okay don't no, even... I, I assume that every published house does um does kindle which you can get it on your computer so you don't have to have a physical book some I people prefer it's... to read on the computer they just buy the kindle version you have it in the computer that's the easiest way or audio is very good uh because you listen to everything that dr farka said and it 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 helps so much to have all that information for your own benefit for your own uh, uh how should i say uh, for your own evolution for your own wealth for your own health for everything uh so um what did i want to ask you uh is there any other anti-inflammatory that you recommend because as you know very well a lot of problem uh in the body comes from all kinds of inflammatory uh, uh issues that we we might have through the course of our life um the best anti-inflammatory would be a diet that is anti-inflammatory right agree i do not recommend pills for inflammation other than and the reason i what about the natural pills the anti the natural anti-inflammatory that people used to take all the time uh curcumin turmeric because these are these are natural stuff those are good and people should cook with those uh yes. herbs uh mm -hmm. and uh different uh, uh like for example black pepper black pepper with curcumin it's an unbelievable anti-inflammatory right uh, but the best thing to do it's an anti-inflammatory diet give us a little bit like an idea okay what would be an anti-inflammatory diet to to you that have all the knowledge give us some tell us some something that we should eat that is anti-inflammatory first do not do harm so the first part of inflammation is from carbohydrates and sugar right sugar is by far the most inflammatory uh, agent that we use every single day without realizing and we praise it right so much damage in the body and all over not only for the eye for the brain for the hair for the aging for the aging of the cell it ages every single uh every single a uh, cell in the body right like oscillates at the end of the molecule it puts like a little sugar and we right. could how much glycosylation it's on the protein for example and we could determine the patient's age so let's say that i am let's say that i'm 30 years old if i eat a lot of sugar my proteins could show that instead of 30 i would be like 70. wow the other side somebody that is 70 and does not eat sugar my the blood might show that they are 45. 
So uh, other yeah, products exactly. That's exactly all, it. Uh, what turns into sugar is fruits, is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, like for example, bread, have little molecules of glucose linked together. So all the body does is just cut those little links and it has as much sugar as it wants. A very, very, very powerful and uh, inflammatory agent is corn syrup. Right. Corn syrup is pretty much in all the foods in the United States. Yes. Whatever is prepackaged. Incredible, yeah. Chances are it has corn syrup in it. Yes. So if it has corn syrup, it's a guarantee that it's going <laughs> cause inflammation. Yeah, exactly. um, Yes, another very, very inflammatory, pro-inflammatory agents are the oils we eat. Uh, the oils are tricky. The oils could be very good anti-inflammatory agents. Exactly. And could be very inflammatory. Very, very damaging and very inflammatory. Yes. Give us an example. I just want to see your take on it. Uh, for example, olive oil. It's yes. one of the best, the best oils. We yeah. If you think of Mediterranean uh, diet, that people in Greece that live a hundred something, and all they use is this olive oil. And, and if you think of carbon 60, that actually it, it employs the olive oil and it uses the molecular carbon in the olive oil. So that makes a lot of sense. But tell us what are the oils that are bad? Any fruits of any uh, plants oil, like uh, peanut oil, uh, sunflower seed oil. Right. Actually, the way they are doing it, they put the oil under pressure, the seeds under pressure, mm -hmm. and something that is gummy comes out. Yeah. Under, so the the manufacturer needs to make it anti-gummy. <laughs> right. To be fluid and. Right. After that they remove the odor mm -hmm. thing is done with chemicals so at the end you really do not have oil oil you really have some type of a plastic that exactly. that was uh, That's uh, so true. went through different processes and people think that it's cheaper and corn oil corn oil is like the worst the worst yeah the worst the yeah. Not only that, but the corn itself is generically yes. modified. So just in case people thought that, you know, they'll get something cheap, they get cheap cancer. It right. does, not only that it's inflammatory, they get cancer, like God. Right. Yes. Now, uh, a Romanian lady writes to us, she said, Romanian eat a lot of bread. Any substitute for bread? Um, in Romania differently than in United States, the breads are made with yeast. And when the yeast goes into the process of making it, the yeast eats the sugar and its lectins that are present in the grains. Okay. So are in Europe, where they do not use the chemicals in United States or used here, it's okay to eat a little bread because it's not toxic like in the United States. Here, bread is not made with this. Also, if you have a piece of bread, you could leave it for three months and it's not going to get spoiled. I finally left one time a bagel in a drawer. And six weeks later, when I came from vacation, the bagel <laughs> is still fresh. I mean, it's a <laughs> bagel. <laughs> it is because of the chemicals, which are mutagenic and pro-inflammatory. Yes. Yeah, if, if yeast is used and the, uh, through the process of fermentation, it removes many, many of the bad toxins that are in the United States. You know, United States is such a rich country and it spends so much by far, like three, four times more than the next country. And we are not number one in health. We are number seven. And this is because, I mean, Cuba, it's ahead of us in health. And this is 
because of the way we eat. You know, we, we do not. Right. What about Romanians? How do they eat? Romanians don't eat that good. <laughs> <laughs> they eat a lot of uh, fried foods. Yeah. And uh, they do not look for organically grown. Right. And it shows in their health, specifically in the cardiovascular issues that they have. Uh, I came from Romania when I was 19. And at that time, people had a portion that uh, the president at that time, Ceausescu, the dictator, had allowed an X amount of uh, grams. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to have like a, like a passport or like a book where they would stamp it for the amount of food that we were allocated for that particular month. Right. And I only, I only got like two months of this and we were not allowed to get our portion. Right. But already had the passports, but it made such a mark on me. Right. The right. To what about polenta? Which one? Polenta. Mama Liga. Polenta. Oh, uh, the problem in United States is that the corn is genetically modified. That's true. Uh, That's true. Is in, for example, in Peru, right. of corn that is purple, that is not genetically modified, right. and is full of antioxidants, but. Right. As we live where we live, I do not know how to get Peru to ex import the purple corn here. In what Rome about if people have like a um, problem with their liver, like they have a fat liver or something? You know, anything you recommend? Because somebody is asking me about that. Fat liver. Uh, that is the standard American diet result. Right. Uh, the first thing they have to eliminate is sugar. Right. Sugar and fructose. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when we eat fruit? The a fruit, it's half of the sugar is made of glucose, and the other half is made by fructose. Mm -hmm. Fructose cannot be metabolized by any other organ but by liver. Mm -hmm. So once somebody eats fruits, it will tax the liver. That's said, we should eat fruit, but like, like for example, we live in United States. And if you wanna eat peaches in February, you go to the store and buy peaches in February. Right. It's never a lack, it's never in season, it's right. all them, for watermelon, for all the fruits. For so yeah. because we have such an abundant culture where nothing right. is lacking. We right. don't put any breaks on when we had enough. Fruits should be consumed in season. So if the season for watermelon is August and September, in August and it yeah, but that, that, that doesn't fly for Americans. They will buy watermelon any exactly. time of the day, yeah. Exactly, so, yeah. and uh, because they do not have breaks, mm. fatty liver results. But uh, the fatty liver also comes from alcohol because alcohol has right. to be metabolized by the liver, uh, by the oils we use, right. by corn syrup and sugar. Sugar is number one. So sugar, corn, of course, corn syrup that goes hand in hand, uh, the wrong oils. Somebody was asking me about uh, grape olives. What do you, uh, grape? Um, uh, grape yeah. oil, grape seed oil, it's also very important. Uh, it is a good substitute. It's not as good as uh, olive oil. But it is a good, uh, so it's a good somebody is asking me if grape oil is, is the good. And it's a good, a better substitute is because it has a heavier or higher melting point. So you right. could saute and you could cook right, right, with right. grapeseed oil. Yes. Right. But it's not as good as olive oil by far. 
So olive oil should be number one. Olive oil should <laughs> be number, number one. Another very good. What about quercetin? Quercetin as an antioxidant. Uh, quercetin, it's a it's a good antioxidant. It uh, is. Uh, yes, quercetin. Um, but uh, it's not, uh, I mean, all it's the... not superior to um, carbocysteine or to any other oxidant to melatonin or is not uh, as good as uh, glutathione, no? No, it's not. Okay. okay. It's so not. that people know, so that they know how to it's make... a good one. Uh, people should, oh, everything that uh, people read, this vitamin is good, this vitamin is good, it's true. It is, yeah. but people should not have a bag with uh, uh, 50 vitamins. No, people sure. should eat healthy. Right. There is no substitute for eating healthy. Right. Uh, I guess, for example, if somebody decides to take uh, uh, quercetin, yes, take it. Right. Uh, but don't take it like from now until the end of ages. No. <laughs> and then substitute for something else. Well, Dr. Farkash, it was such a pleasure. We spoke for an hour. It was like I wanted to speak with you for, for another 10 hours. And we'll do it again if you don't mind because you are amazing. Everything was very interesting, very helpful advice. And everybody is grateful and thankful. We had a lot of people watching us. And guys... You know, uh, somebody was also asking a top vegetable that we should eat. Do you have like a quick, quick answer for the top vegetables you recommend? I think the very best is cabbage. 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 Anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. Actually, uh, fermented cabbage. It's right. so good. It is is such a such a good source of prebiotics, probiotics, vitamins. Okay. It's like a pharmacy in a leaf. Yeah. And other than cabbage? Uh, broccoli, Brussels broccoli. sprouts. Uh, 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 cruciferous vegetables are the best, by That's far. Best. Yeah, I know. I know. So listen, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for your knowledge. I'm grateful for your extraordinary presence, for everything you do for us. And most likely, guys, The End of Aging, Dr. Daniel Farkash, is available everywhere. But please, please, please um, don't forget to buy this book. And if you don't want to read, do, do the audio. If you don't want to buy the physical book, get the Kindle book. But get the book. Get the book. And I promise you that I will convince Dr. Farkas to be back with us and, and, and discuss much more. And we can interact with everybody listening. And, uh, and I cannot thank you enough for your time, for your expertise, for your knowledge. And everybody said, we'll get the book. And, uh, and we should advertise a book. That's true. I'm actually, if you uh, give me any, any of your, um, the cover of the book and everything, we'll, we'll continue to present this on over every social media because like people said, thank you for sharing. People are grateful. People listen. People learn so much and it's for their own health. It's for, uh, they benefit from it. Dr. Farkas, you're a, an amazing doctor. You're a beautiful human being. Oh, thank I you. have all the love in the world for you and I'm grateful that you took for your precious time to speak with the audience and, and teach people and educate them and your book is just one of the most amazing books that everybody should read now and don't, don't uh, uh, hesitate to get the book right now and, and buy it and you will uh, uh, learn more than you ever learn about your health and about the ability to prevent aging. And all these discoveries that Dr. Farkash is presenting in the book, that everything has to do with the cellular level and everything that you should take and everything you should do. The book is an encyclopedia of, of health. Thank you, Dr. Farkash. So much. It was such so a pleasure. Grateful. grateful. And, and promise you come back with us and talk to us more because this is so valuable. We cannot thank you enough. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. everybody listening. We are grateful and we're grateful to Dr. Farkash and we love you and have a, a beautiful week. And uh, we promise to have you Dr. Farkash back with us soon. Thank you so much. Have Thank you for listening.